we read of conversion and we read of converts and this world comes to us and says is this really possible is that not just a fantasy but on the basis of the Word of God conversion is something that is possible a person who is born into this world and born in sin does not have to remain there. They do not just need to lay back and wait for death to take them. But conversion based upon the Word of God, declaring it to be so, is possible for you, my dear friend. I take you to several portions of Scripture. First of all, to Psalm 19, which reads, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. In Peter's second sermon, Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, we read that he calls the people to repent and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. In Acts chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas are making their way back from their missionary journey and they're coming towards Jerusalem and they are reporting along the way about the conversion of the Gentiles and they are bringing great joy to the brethren who hear of these things. In James chapter 5 and the last two verses we read, My brethren, if anyone among you strays from the truth and one converts him, let him know that he who converts a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3, declared, Unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that's serious business. If all of a sudden heaven's doors are barred against us, except there be conversion in our hearts, except there be that stamp upon us, that we are a convert, that there has been a vital and a radical change within us. Yes, conversion is real, and yes, conversion is possible, based upon the Word of God, which was not given to tease us or to tantalize us with something that is not possible. Conversion is something for each and every one of us, that we might know the blessing of the kingdom of heaven and that we might enter into those great and divine privileges that the Lord is preparing for us. Now, of course, the question is, how does this happen? So many people have said, I've tried to change, and they throw up their hands in utter despair. And they say, how is it possible? In Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23, we read, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? And the answer is, of course, they cannot. That is not possible for a man to change his skin or for an animal such as a leopard to change the pattern of their coat. But you see, conversion and change, that vital change of the heart is not of our doing. Here is something that is completely and absolutely of God's doing. So many people say, I've tried the multi-step programs. I've tried all of the different things that this world has to offer. I've tried the gimmicks and the schemes and the programs, and I have found myself to be utterly changed. It is because the change needs to happen from the inside out rather than from the outside in. There needs to be that work of God in your heart, that conversion that Peter and that Paul and that all of the apostles begged the people to come to, that they might come to the cross and that they might know conversion from the inside and out. You see, we find ourselves in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 where the Apostle Paul said, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. You see, a person who is dead, although they might be walking around, yet they are dead to the core, they are spiritually dead. They cannot change. There is no ability for them to change. Paul says, you were dead in these trespasses and sins, you formerly walked in them, the lusts of your flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh. But he says, but God, 
You see, when God enters into the picture, everything is changed. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, change is not possible, my friend. If you're trying to change, stop right now and come to the cross because you are dead in your trespasses and sins and there is no hope. You will only find futility and frustration and despair upon despair. But come to the cross. Many years ago, a friend of mine by the name of Bob Dawson was sitting in a church. Bob had lived his own life and he had gone his own way seeking the pleasures and the pursuits of this world, but he knew the Bible was true. He had been taught well by his parents as a young lad and he finds himself in a church and he finds himself in a gospel service and he said every time the preacher would point his finger anywhere in his direction it was as though that finger would reach over a hundred feet and point right into his nose. Well that day Bob Dawson was saved. He was converted. And you see he worked on a, in a garage, in a car garage on Dufferin Street here in Winnipeg. And he had a filthy mouth. But a couple of weeks go by and the woman who lived next door to this garage says to the owner of the garage, says, Did you fire that man, Bob Dawson? I haven't heard his filthy mouth in a long time. You see, there was conversion and there was change in that life. Another woman was sitting in a gospel service and the preacher said, "If he, Don't tell me that you're not able to get out of that common law relationship. That woman went home immediately and said to her common-law friend, This is wrong. We're done. I'm moving out. You see, conversion had taken place and there was a change in that heart. It wasn't Bob's change. It wasn't the woman's change. You see, God had come and changed the heart. And there was a difference in those lives. Are you looking for change in your life? Come to the cross. Come to him who knows what it is to create this world and also the one who is able to refashion that which has become marred by sin and that has what has become corrupted. God is able to do a marvelous work in your life. Jesus stood at the grave of Lazarus and Lazarus was not able to do anything. His sisters would have loved to have had him come out of that grave. But it wasn't in Lazarus' ability. It was when Jesus stood and called, Come forth. It was the power of God that did that mighty work on that day so long ago. And Lazarus, he comes out wrapped in those grave clothes. Jesus is able to stand at the door of your grave and to say, Tony, Peter, Miriam, Isabel, come forth. Would you call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I want conversion to work in my heart. I want a changed life. Come to the cross and know his change today. Amen.